What is ferrofluid? Ah, well, this is one that we haven't talked about yet. So, this question comes from, let's see, sorry, I should be more organized. Ryan in Los Angeles. Hey Paul, what is ferrofluid? And can adding a few drops to the tweeter increase its power handling or make it sound better? Or is this snake oil bullshit? Well, it's not snake oil. And so let's, let's start with what, what is ferrofluid? For, for a while, it was all the rage. Every loudspeaker that was cool and groovy was based on ferrofluid. And ferrofluid is a magnetic fluid. Uh, they've come up with some kind of way to suspend magnetic particles in, in, a, in a liquid. It was developed by NASA years ago. Uh, I th do I remember why? I think some guy wanted to, in, into space, he wanted to be able to make some sort of pump that instead of using mechanical parts, to use magnetic fields to pull liquid. And if you can imagine a magnetic pump is, you know, as opposed to something that's spinning, normally a pump has like an impeller or, and, and is plumbing, but you're in the vacuum of space. And I think what he did is he came up with, with a fluid means called ferrofluid that uh, used these big co uh, magnetic coils and that could pull the liquid around. And I don't particularly know why he did that. Um, but um, in a loudspeaker, and I th if I remember right, I think they were generally done in woofers, but I know they were done in tweeters too. Well, first off, you can't just add a couple of drops. If you mean yourself, you can't go out and buy a tweeter and add a couple of drops and have it do something. I don't think it's going to do anything, and I don't think it's going to improve anything. But it isn't snake oil, and it isn't BS. So if memory serves correctly, the woofers, the drivers, um, had ferrofluid in the gaps, and they did it to pull heat away. So there's an interesting, gosh, I wish I, I knew more about physics, but there's an interesting thing that uh, uh, Mary uh, Curie uh, came up with, and it's named after her. But um, as uh, magnetics get hot, they start to lose their, magnetics, their magnetic ability. So a really hot magnet isn't as powerful as a cold magnet, which is likely why, oh, big uh, MRI machines and, and uh, these, these, these machines that, you know, that's a magnetic resonance imaging machine, that they depend on very powerful magnets. And they usually are cooled with like liquid nitrogen or, or some kind of uh, cryo to keep them at as, as cold as they can possibly be. Electricity flows with less resistance when it's co uh, cold, and um, uh, magnets are, are much more powerful when they are cold as opposed to hot. So when you're running a woofer or a tweeter and you're banging this thing hard, you know, moving back and forth, making sound, you're creating a lot of heat. So I think what they did is they put ferrofluid in uh, into this, and the ferrofluid had the capability of transferring that heat through magnetic means to an external heat sink, thus lowering the heat of the, the magnetic circuit, increasing its efficiency, and therefore you had a stronger magnet. But it was because it was lowering heat as opposed to uh, making you know stronger magnets. I, I hope that makes sense. So. Um, it was a way of cooling drivers. I don't see it much in use anymore. Uh, like, uh, I'll, you know, we're on our speaker, we're, we're working on uh, a new line of loudspeakers that I've talked a great deal about. And we just got in some of the drivers. <laughs> really cool, God, beautiful cast, cast frames. There's a 12 inch servo controlled woofer that we're working on. And one of the things that we did that, like Infinity and Genesis, we did not is. For this heat problem, we're making much bigger voice coils. I think we've got a, like a two and a half inch voice coil. I mean, that's big, 
big voice coil. They're more expensive. Like in Genesis and Infinity, they had like one inch voice coils. So when you have these small voice coils and they're really pounding away, they create a lot of heat and it's hard to get rid of that heat. So they, they tend to lose some of their power. If you can make a larger voice coil, like what we're doing, like a two and a half inch voice coil, that thing can handle 12, 15, 1800 watts um, uh, with, without melting, without losing much of its power, just from brute strength and the types of magnets that we use. Um, so that's kind of the new direction, and I think ferroflute has kind of fallen out of favor. But what a great question, and thank you for bringing that up, because for a while, ferrofluid, man, that was the cat's meow. <laughs> but that's my best recollection of what it did removed heat, and it was a, a good way to, to keep uh, magnets efficient in loudspeakers so that you had better performance. Okay, thanks.